And time flew by. Um, if you look at pictures of even some of your kids, some of you that have kids, uh, a year ago and look at the pictures now of how they look, man, they have changed a lot, haven't they? Um, and, you know, you hope that if you've changed as an adult over the last year, it's been good, you know. Uh, but uh, either way, time definitely is flying by. I want to I wanna get you to think about tonight God's timing. And God's timing, we always say, the saying is God's timing is perfect. And uh, we say we believe that, but sometimes when God's timing and our timing doesn't line up, we don't always act that way, right? But I want you to see Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Um, we'll start reading in verse number 1. And for those of you that are not as familiar with it, you might think of an old 1970s rock song. But I can tell you this, uh, they did not come up with the words, right? They're in the Bible a lot longer, uh, a lot, way, way before they ever sang, you know, a time to live. A time to die. All right, it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, look at verse number 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. If you look back over your last year, there's been some, there's been some tears in most of your lives. There's probably been some joy as well. There's been some mourning. And if you've danced, we don't want to see it, okay? But hopefully the, the idea there is you've had some rejoicing in your life. Uh, look at verse 5. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. You can ask David about a time to gather stones, right? You can ask him about when to cast them as well. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, Amen. <laughs> and a time to speak. Amen to that as well. A time to love and a time to hate. You may not may find it hard to believe that God would say there's a time to hate things, but you know you ought to hate sin. You ought to hate the things that God hates. And there are some things that God says that He hates. You can read about some of those things in Proverbs chapter 6. You can find them all through the Bible, however. And it says here, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Look at this. I want you to see this. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. I, I want to talk to you this evening about, uh, just for a little bit, and I, I sincerely mean that. You know, sometimes when preachers say that, it's going to be another hour and a half, but I mean that tonight. We've got a lot of things to do and some food to eat. I know some of you are, are you know, you didn't eat a big dinner, so... Some of you nodding your head going, Preacher, you've got to get done with this, all right? But I do want to take some time this, this evening, and I, I want, to, want to remind you that, that verse number 11 is in your Bible. Uh, God makes everything beautiful, but look what it says, not in our time. Not in your time, not in the, the preacher's time, in his time. And I want to talk to you about God's timing this evening, in God's timing. Let's ask for God's blessing, and I... Sincerely want that this evening. Father, we ask for your blessing on the Word of God tonight. Lord, uh, it would be a, a, a foolish thing to get together, Lord, and uh, to, to play games as we're going to, and to sing as we have, and to pray as we will. Uh, but Lord, it would be foolish to get together and, and not spend some time in your Word. Lord, we ask for your blessing as we open up Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Lord, would you speak to us tonight? Lord, I pray you'd remind us about your timing. Lord, as we look back over the time that is already gone and we can't go back to, Lord, we can't go back to some point earlier in the calendar and change something that was done or change the way we spent our time. Lord, all we have is right now. Lord, we're, we're not even promised tomorrow. We'd like to think that we have it, Lord, every day. And, uh, Lord, we'd like to think that until, Lord, uh, you come back, that we have many days ahead of us, but none of us know how long that is. Lord, I pray you'd help us just to, uh, to learn, Lord, to let you make things beautiful in, in your timing. 
we ask for your blessing now. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want, I want you to see a couple of things here. Number one, I want you to see that there's balance to the Lord's timing. He says there a time to kill. Look at verse 3. A time to kill and a time to heal. Notice, he doesn't say a time to murder. There's a difference between murder and killing. There really is. All right, he says there a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. You know what you learn from all these contrasts? You learn that there's balance in it. God is not skewed like we are. We tend to, here's what happens. Here's what happens in Christianity. There are some who make God like Zeus. He's up there with a lightning bolt just waiting for you to mess up. And as soon as you do, bam, you're, you're a goner. Then there's some over here who make God to be Santa Claus. And man, he just likes everything in your life. And he would never be upset with you. I'm so sick and tired of seeing newsflash, God's not angry with you. I've seen that all over social media. I'm so tired of it, all right? Like it's, you know, this, this, this great thing. Can I say this? There are some things and there are some people that God is angry at. That's biblical. I'm not making that up. God said that he's angry with the wicked every day, all right? So the, look, the, what, 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 however, that, that all said, you don't go to either extreme. You look at God through the prism of his word and you learn, you learn about God. He's not like you and like I am. He doesn't get skewed in one area. God is perfect. And he's perfect love. And he's perfect hatred. And he's, he's righteous is what he is. And so you find in the Lord's timing, there's balance to it. There's a time for everything. You know what else you see? God has his own timing. God has his own timing for everything. You see this. Look, if you would, at, uh, oh, let's see here. Verse number 1. To everything there's a season and a time. Look at this. To every purpose under the heaven you learn that time has a purpose. God has given you the time that he's given you in your life for a specific reason. And can I say, I'll go a step further. You are here tonight specifically for God's purpose. All right, you're not just here because, well, you know, there's nothing else to do. I mean, yeah, you had the free will, I get it. You had the free will to get dressed, you know, to come here with your family and to open up the Bible and all that. However, you reacting to God's will for your life reveals that there's a specific purpose for why you're here. And you know what we're doing right now? We're opening up the Word of God so God can speak to you. There's a purpose in that. God does not just give us time to be squandered. Time is not, a, a, you know, this infinite thing that just keeps on going. Eventually, your time runs out. And so with every moment you get, there's a purpose in it. You see that God makes everything beautiful in His time. Can I say this? Timing is everything. Let me ask you some, of you, some of you that are married, all right, some of you married folks tonight, have you ever learned that when you want to ask your spouse for something, and you know they're probably not going to be excited about that thing that you're going to ask them about, that you wait for the right time to ask them that question, all right? There are times when I know that the kids want to ask me to do something, and I'll hear Lacey say, not now, not now, and it's because she knows you know, this is not the right time. Wait for the right opportunity, then you can ask him. And you give him those big brown puppy dog eye looks, right? And then, then he'll say yes. Timing is everything, is it not? Think about this. Those of you that are saved tonight, think about the timing involved in God bringing the word of God to you when he did. For those of you that found this church, think about the timing in your life where God brought you to this church. Think about when you not only got saved, but maybe you got away from the Lord and the timing that God put, the, the things that God orchestrated in the timing that he did to get you right with him. Timing's everything. You know, there are some people that want to do some things for the Lord and God wants them to do it in his time. There are some things that, that God is going to, you've been praying about some things in your life this last year and God hasn't answered all those prayers to the extent that you want to see them answered, but he's going to, in his time. The, the thing is, we're on a different calendar than the Lord. You know, there's a couple ways to react to time. You can be early, all right? You can be late. You can never show up, all right, to the, to the event that God has for you. Or you could be just on time. And you know what I would encourage you to learn to do is get on God's schedule and learn to be just on time. And, you know, there are times when you may, I think of this, I think of looking back over my life, and there were things that I wanted to do for the Lord, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I was ready to do all the things that I want to do, and God said, he said, okay, you're so excited, I'm going to let you go, and I was like, oh, I was early on that one. I got the, I got the message, Lord, I'm learning the lesson. 
there have been times where God has basically taken me and just taken my hand and going, are you listening to anything that I'm saying? And you know what? I was, I was like, oh, you know what? It's almost like that look on a husband's face when his wife's been talking to him for about a minute. And she goes, what are you thinking? He goes, right? And you're like, oh, oh, she's talking to me. Think fast. Think fast, you know? Just nod, nod, okay? And you know what that is? God's trying to get your attention. And you know what? Sometimes we are, we're late. And God does all kinds of things to wake us up, and we don't listen, and we try to hit the snooze button on the alarm, and so we're late. There are some, some things in our lives that God says, here's exactly where I want you to be. Here's exactly what I want in your life right now. Here's what I have set in this time, in this season of your life. And we just never make it at all. Let me speak to, to, to everyone here. Everyone's in a different season of life. And I will tell you this much. I remember when they were real, you know, much smaller and they were, you know, toddler to baby, that, that age. And I just remember thinking, we're going to have to survive, <laughs> you know. And, and you go through that survival stage. And I know James and Debbie, oh, yeah, we haven't slept in, you know, months. And, and then now I'm painting downstairs and I'm never going to sleep. Now I've got these fumes going through my head. And, you know, I, you go through these, these stages in your life where you look at it, and you know what everybody thinks about the stage that you're in right now? You think your stage is the hardest. Be honest. Doesn't matter what it is. If you're, hey, you know, we can go through the room. Um, you're... You're bivocational ministry. You're working full-time, and you're pastoring full-time. And so you know what pastors do? Oh, brother, just pray for me. It's so hard. And you know what the, the person does that maybe is working a full-time job and going to school? It's hard. And you know what the people do that are, just have a baby? It's hard. We all think our stage is the hardest one, don't we? We do, if we're honest about it. But if you learn to do, do this, learn to understand that where you're at right now is a specific season in, in your life, and God has a purpose for it. And the things that you're learning that you're going through is going to be a blessing, not just to you, but to the people that God, in His time, is going to bring your way for you to minister to. Let me say this, number one. God sets timing for events in your life. God is a God of time. Now, here's what's weird about that. God is eternal. He is not bound by time. And yet, in the very beginning of your Bible, go back to Genesis chapter number 1. We're going to go verse by verse from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22 tonight. Amen. All right. Just making sure you're listening. All right. Genesis chapter 1. I, I want you to see this, though. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says in verse number 5, God call, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. You know when God says, let there be light in verse 3, you know what he's doing? He's creating day and night. He is creating time. A being who is not bound by time, who is infinite, who's always been, I don't know that I fully understand that, I can't wait to get to glory and have the perfect mind of Christ. You know, because if we're honest, we struggle with trying to understand a God that is circular. He's always been, and we are linear. We start here, we die here. But here's a God who has never had a beginning. He's always existed, and he goes, I'm going to make time. And I won't be affected by it, but my creation will. You say, why is that? Because God's got a structure and order. God sets timing, and God sets certain things in your life at specific times in your life for specific reasons. God does that. Uh, look at Malachi chapter 3. Malachi, go to the last book in your Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. God sets timing for events in your life. Malachi chapter number 3. Where's Malachi at? Malachi? Is that you, buddy? Malachi, chapter number 3. Malachi, chapter number 3. Look, if you would, at verse number 11. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 11. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That's Satan. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit. Look at this. Before the time in the field. Now, you know that field, according to the Gospels, is a picture of the field is the world. And, and you as a Christian, there is fruit that God wants to produce in your life, but he's not going to rush it. He's not, you know what happens when you rush fruit? It can produce it, but you know what ends up happening? That fruit may not be in that, in that ripe situation. It may not be ripe. And you know what happens? Sometimes if you let that fruit sit there too long, it spoils and falls to the ground. You know what all that means? Timing is everything. And God sets certain things in your life for specific times for a specific reason. Now, I can't, 
If I were to go through, there are things that are going on in your life that I know nothing about, that only you and the Lord know about. But if we went around the room, there, are, there, there would no doubt there would be situations and things in your life right now where you are thinking to yourself, even if you don't say it verbally out loud, why? I can tell you why. God has a reason for it. And God has a, a specific time, and there's a specific place that he's bringing you to at a specific time to bring about a specific fruit in your life. God sets that in place. Think about this. Think about the stories you've heard of, 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 the, of the person that gets saved when I hear in the gospel, and they go, you know what? If, I hadn't, if I'd gotten on that bus, if I'd gotten on that airplane flight, if I'd done this, if I'd gone the way I'd wanted to go, if the timing wasn't just right, I wouldn't have been able to hear this message. How many times do you hear stories like that? Why is that? God's timing is right. And God sets certain times in your life for certain events that he's going to bring you to. I want you to understand this, too. God's timing is not based on your timing. Now, now here's, here's the reality, guys. Here's the reality. We have a very humanistic approach to Christianity today. In other words, God is here for me, not the other way around. If, if, if God is here for me, then, man, when things don't work out, when I want them to, and, and, I, and I'm not getting where I want to, when I want to, then it's God's fault. But if you are not at the center and God's at the center and you understand that you are following the Lord's will as best as you can and God is setting the timing for events in your life, then you learn to say, His timing is better than mine. God's timing is not based on your timing. I want you to consider David's life. David's life. You know what David did? David was told by the prophet that he was supposed to be the king of Israel. And Saul was a wicked king. And you know what David had the opportunity to do? David had the opportunity to dethrone Saul and put himself in that position. You know what David said? Nope. Not my job. This is going to happen in God's timing. He had not just the right, but guys, he had a prophet sent from God to say to him, you are God's anointed. You are the one that's a man after God's own heart. You're going to replace King Saul. And David could have said, okay, let's go, let's do this, let's get him out of there. And when Saul came after David the way he did, he was wrong. And David could have fought, but David said, no, my timing is not God's timing. Can I say this on the flip side? And I love you, so I'm going to say this as gently as I can. There are some of you that, some Christians and some of you in this room that may be waiting and waiting. You know, it's like that person that waits for that perfect opportunity. And you know, what, you know what you learn about perfect opportunities? They never come. That person that says, you know what? When I clean up my life and I quit this bad habit and, and I give more money to the church and I reform myself and I turn over a new leaf sufficiently enough, then I'll come to Christ and receive him as my Savior. Guess what happens a lot of times? That time never comes. And that person dies without Jesus Christ and they go on in eternity without him. That, that person, we say timing is everything. How about this? How about the sinner that says, I, I, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord at the great white throne judgment. Well, guess what? Good confession, but your timing's a little bit off. You say, why? Because he had the opportunity in his life to say that, and the timing is already passed for God to say, welcome home, son. You know what he says to the sinner at that point? Depart from me, for I never knew you. Why? Because timing is everything. Some Christians will say, you know what, when I complete this, and when I'm done with this, then I'll give my time to God. And guess what, that, that time never comes. You know what the young man says? When I have my kids, and I raise my kids, and then I retire at the age of 40, because I'll, I'll be the next Google founder, and I'll make all this money, and I'll, I'll just give it all to God. Guys, can I say this, that, that Christian that thinks that way, that, God bless them, but you know, the reality is, it's not realistic. If you're not giving God 10 bucks, you're not going to give a million. Amen? Amen? And if you say, you know what? When I have more time in retirement to give my life to God, when you have 10 minutes right now, you're not willing to give them, then you've got a problem. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. God's timing is not based on your timing. We tend to feel that our time is limitless, and the reality is it's not. And you know what I did? I did this uh, in preparation for the year, and next Wednesday night we're actually going to be uh, 
going through and looking at the calendar for our church for this next year and talking about some of the goals that we have as a church and some of the things that I feel the Lord wants us to do. And, and I'm really excited about that. Um, man, I'm, I'm blessed, if, you know, just to see some of the progress we've already made downstairs and uh, thankful to have Brother James and Brother Joel do some of that work down there. And it looks great already. There's a lot of things, you know, uh, fixing up our church building, uh, vacation Bible school. There's a lot of things. But what, I, what, I, what I'm getting at is this. I started looking at the calendar. And when you start the year, you know what happens when you look at a calendar? It's blank, and it looks like there's all this time. Then I started putting things on that calendar. What I realized was there's not all that time. Just like I felt this year, and I go, oh, man, I don't have time to do this and do this and do this. I, I realized when I started looking at the calendar for 2016, it's looking the same way. You say, why? Because time is not infinite. It doesn't just keep going. It's finite. And we look at things and we go, I'll just, I'll just do it later. I'll just do it later. And God says, for some of you, it's, not the, it's the opposite of David's situation. For some of you, it's, hey, do it now. Don't keep putting off tomorrow what you can do today. Look at uh, James chapter number 4. And look, at you, if you would, at uh, James chapter number 4. In verse number 14, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. Who can tell me what's going to happen tomorrow? And we went to P.F. Chang's recently, and I had a little, little cookie, you know, a little fortune cookie, and I opened that thing up, you know, because I couldn't wait to see the great wisdom that would come upon me. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I think, uh, I can't remember, one of my kids said when I go, that is definitely not true. Then I opened mine, and it says, you will be a community leader in time to come. I said, they have no idea who I am. <laughs> My community leadership is probably going to be confined to this church. But, uh, but it says there, what is your life? That's a question. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time. Look at this, a little time. And then vanisheth away. You know what I really enjoy doing? I like driving um, down over by, well, you guys ever been over like by the zoo, that area? They got some houses over there from the early 1900s. And you drive through some of those neighborhoods, beautiful houses, you know, all these old Victorian cottage looking type things, and driving through there, and I look at those houses, you know what I think of? How many families lived in that house at that, during the, the lifetime of that house? And I can tell you this much, in 1957, the family that lived on that house on Elm Lane, you know what they all thought? They thought they would be the only family living in that house, and everything that happened in that house was about them, and they thought it would always be that way, and they're forgotten, there's another family in there now. And probably five families since then. You know why? Because time just keeps moving. What am I saying? If the Lord's asking you to do some things, maybe change some things, instead of putting it off for some of you, maybe you need to learn to say, now. Maybe that could be the word for some of you this year. Now. Now. God's timing is based on things you can't see. Since you're close to Hebrews, go over to Hebrews chapter number 11 and Brother Joel talked about Hebrews chapter 11. And brother, by the way, I confess you are right. It does have 40 verses in it. I apologize. Hebrews chapter number 11. Uh, brother James, if you could uh, erase that from the recording, we'd appreciate that. Okay, all right. Hebrews chapter number 11, <laughs> verse number 3. The Bible says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Look at this. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You know why God's timing is different than yours? Because God's timing is based on eternal things. And for the majority of you, and the majority, of, and myself included, you know what our timing is based on things we can see. This bill has to be paid on this day. And this, uh, this dental appointment takes place at this day and this hour. And this kid needs to be going to the soccer practice at this time this hour. And I've got this appointment with my doctor at this time. And I've got this interview over here on this day. And there's nothing wrong with those things, but you know what they are? They're all temporal things. And so you tend to look at everything through the prism of what's happening right now instead of what's happening in eternity. And some of you are going through a season in your life where it just seems like one thing after another. And you go, man, what is going on? What is this happening? And it just seems like everything's happening at one time. And the Lord's saying, yeah, it is. Because I'm trying to bring you through something. And I'm trying to grow you to a place that you can't see right now. I think time is sort of like, forgive me if you don't like the analogy, I, I sort of think time is like a gun. You say, why is that? Well, in the hands of a good person, it can do some great things. 
can save people's lives. In the hands of an evil heart, it can destroy a lot of things. It's a, time is also like money. Um, you know, it, it, in the right hands, money can be a blessing to other people. It can enrich other people's lives. It can support missionaries. It can support the ministry of the work of God. Uh, it can also, on the flip side, be squandered and wasted and used for naught. Time is just like that. Henry David Thoreau wrote in a book called Walden, as if you could kill time without injuring eternity. You understand you only have 24 hours every day. That's not going to change. Now, you know what you do? You look at it and you go like this. Okay, now I'm in my 30s and, man, time's just flying by. I remember when I was 10 years old and I was waiting for my birthday. It seemed like an eternity. Can I say this? It wasn't any more or less time. It's always been the same. It just feels different. And as you get older, it feels like it's going faster and faster, but God's timing for your life is finite. You know what David says? Teach us to number our days. Why is that? Because you need God's help with that. You know, you, need this, you know what you need this year? When you start putting your calendar together, say, Lord, teach me to number my days the right way. Lord, show me how to use the time that you've given me. God, give me wisdom in how I should take the month and the week and the day that stands in front of me. You know what we tend to do? We tend to look at, man, way out there. And I can't wait till I get to the end of my life and I'm sitting there, you know, in the hospital bed and all the kids are holding hands and we're all just singing, you know, uh, shall we gather at the river, the beauty, you know, we're all, we're all having a great family time together and I'm, you know, bequeathing them my last will and testament and talking about all the great things, you know, that God has done in my life. We all look at that as the end and we go, man, when I get there, I hope I can finish the right way. Can, can, I, can I say this? That may or may not be how it ends for everybody here. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. Some, it may be unexpected. But I can tell you this much. However it is that you are going to end it, it's not going to be any different than how you're living it right now. If you think somehow magically that when we get to the end, it's going to be some transformation that takes place and everything's going to be great and we'll look back and go, oh man, I, just a great life and great time that I, I, I lived for God. It won't be that way. You have to start that thing now. God's timing for your life is finite. Let me give you to consider this. If you had a bank that credited your account every morning with $86,000. I got your attention now, don't I? $86,000 that carried over no balance from day to day, allowed you to keep no cash in your account, and every evening cancel whatever part of the amount you failed to use during the day, what would you do? You'd use all of it. If I said, look, Megan, I'm going to give you 86 grand a day. Here's the problem. You can't take any of it with you tomorrow. You've got to use it all day. You know what? She would have 20 horses by tomorrow. <laughs> 20 championship horses, right? And Justin's thinking, no, no. She'd have a bunch of motorcycles, and they'd go back and forth on which way the money's going to get used, right? But 86 grand a day that, that you had in your account, and you couldn't take any of it with you into tomorrow. You had to use it all day. Guess what you do? You would find a way to use that money, I am very sure. Well, you know what you have every single day? 86,400 seconds. Every day. And you don't carry any of them over. They're used and they're gone. What are you going to do with them? God's timing for your soul, on the other hand, is infinite. You know, we get to the end of this thing. We get to Revelation. I want you to go there. Revelation chapter 22 Revelation chapter 22. I like talking about eternity. I honestly get tired of talking about the news and the politics of the day and the things that are going on right now. And God has placed us here for such a time as this. I don't doubt that. God has put you as a Christian in America, in Colorado, in Aurora, at this time for such a time as this. God has you here for a reason. I don't doubt that. But man, I like thinking about eternity. Don't you like thinking about a place where you no longer have to live by a schedule? Amen. It's sort of Groundhog Day, but in a blessed way. I mean, every day for all eternity, all we do is praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And you never get sick anymore, and there's no more bills, and there's no more uh, uh, kids that go wayward away from the Lord, and there's no more problems, there's no more brothers getting offended by another brother, there's no more church splits. It's just all perfect for eternity. Isn't that going to be great? That's going to be great. I like talking about that. I like thinking about that. Look what it says in Revelation 22 and verse number 5. 
And there shall be no night there. You know how this whole thing starts? This whole thing starts with God creating light. And that's day. And then he separates the light from the darkness, and that's night. And there's time. And look what it says here in verse 5. There shall be no night there. They need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign, look at this, forever and ever. You know, there are things that God has put you through right now, and there are times in your lives where God is going to work some things out that you may or may not understand. And God may, is doing something right now, at this very moment in your life. You say, why? To what end? For eternity. You know what's not going to matter? I, 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 I'm telling you this right now. Some of you have a hard time thinking about, about this, but it's true. And I know Brother St. John, I'll use his illustration because I know he believes this sincerely. 30 years from now, the United States Air Force is not going to be worrying about Stephen St. John. You know, Brother St. John, if he could say anything right now, they're not worried about me right now, you know. But the truth of the matter is, 20, 30, 40 years from now, your employer is not going to go, oh, oh, I hope Joel's okay, I hope his family's okay. You know what they're going to be thinking about? Making their buck and whoever's in charge running the thing and keeping power and growing their business. You say, why? Because that's the way of the world. They're not going to care about that. So you need to learn to do, while God has put you in this, on this, in this world, on this earth, to, to use material things for his glory, yes, understand there is something far bigger than all this that goes on. And it gets going when time ends. <laughs> so you know what God wants you to do right now while you have the time? Commit it to him. Now, I don't know if you've done this yet. I don't know if you've planned out your year and looked at vacation time and Try to put all that stuff together on your schedule and on your calendar. But you know what you ought to do first and foremost is say, Lord, what would you have? Teach me to number my days. Lord, in your timing, I want you to make this year beautiful. Now, I'm going to say this right now. You know what you are? You're a sinner and I'm a sinner. So we're always going to get to the end out. Newsflash. In 2016, you're going to look back over 2016 and go, man, I wish I could have. I wish I would have. That's always going to be part of the human experience because you are not sinless. <laughs> but I can tell you this much. You can look back over the year, a year from now, and see a much more beautiful year knowing that everything that you did, or at least the majority of what you committed was, and you put in God's hand, man, it was done as beautiful when it was done. Why? Because it was done in his timing. And you didn't get ahead of him. And he didn't have to smack you upside the head and get you to catch up. And it wasn't a matter of you not just, just simply not showing up at all. <laughs> you Rather, you were just on time. And because you were just on time, you were on God's schedule, and the Lord did some beautiful things in your life, and he wants to do that. You know one of the greatest things God does? For those of you that are saved, you look back. For me, I was 11 years old. At Silver State Baptist Youth Camp, I knelt down at an old-fashioned altar, and I realized I was a sinner. I realized I was on my way to hell. You say, why do you always mention hell? Because Jesus Christ did. He says, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Repeatedly in the Gospel of Mark. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number uh, uh, 20, where the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. I didn't make that up. The Bible says that. God said that. And you know what I realized? I realized I was a sinner. I realized that God had suffered for me. He had taken my sin upon him. The Bible says he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I look back on that day at that time, and it's a special thing for me. I say, why? Because I realized that God did something supernatural in that time. Now, you can look back at certain events in your life, and you can go, man, what a special time that was. You might go, you know what, I remember when we walked down, you know, she walked down the aisle and we held hands and, you know, we looked in each other's eyes and we were so in love and we kissed and, man, what a special day that was. You know, or, or man, I remember when she was screaming, I can't do this, I can't do this, and she's pushing that baby out, honey, you got to, we can't stop now, right? You, you got it, and that baby comes out and, you know, you're both crying. As a man, I just got a little moist, you know, a little eye sweat going on. With every, I always thought, after the first one, I thought, nope, I won't cry again. And every single time, I cried. I cried, I did. I just saw them, <laughs> you know, I, I fell apart. And you can look back at some events in your life and go, man, what a beautiful thing. You know what God may want to do tonight? There's some sin in your life that you haven't confessed. You know what God may want to do? He may want to restore fellowship with you. And you can look, on, look back at December 31st, 2015, and go, man, what a beautiful time. I got some things right with God. If you're here without Jesus Christ, you never trust Him as your Savior, you know what God may want to do? Take you to an old-fashioned altar and say, tonight, 
on December 31st, I quit trusting in my own righteousness and I trust in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You know what the Lord may do in a young person's life? I don't know. He may tell a young person, I want you to be a, a, a missionary. I want you to be a, a pastor's wife. I want you to, you know, my kids are going, mm-mm, dad, I don't know. pastor's wife, not me. Like, when we watch mom, no thank you. Right? No. Okay. <laughs> you know, the reality is God may want to do something in your life in this timing. And you know, I'll tell you this. There are things that God does and he provokes you to. The Spirit of God may move in your life at a certain time. And I'll tell you this right now. God doesn't always do it the same way every time. And God's a gentleman. There are times where God has brought you through certain things and they culminate. And they build to a certain place. And that place might be tonight. I don't know what everyone's going through. But it may be that God's saying, hey, all these things have happened. They've led you to this service at this time to consider what you're hearing right now to make a difference in the year to come. Will you let him do that? In God's timing. All things beautiful. Lord, we desire for you to take us. Lord, we desire for you to use us. Lord, we ask that you help us not to put off the things that you've asked us to do. Well, there might be some things we need to surrender to you. There might be some habits. There might be some friendships, some relationships. Lord, there might be some changes that you want to bring about in our lives this year. Lord, it may just be a matter of giving you more of the time that we have. When we consider the hours and the Man, the second, all the millions of seconds and the minutes and the hours that get spent, Lord, simply on our own selves throughout a year. Lord, help us to consider, Lord, that you came, Lord, in the fullness of time. And you were born of a woman. Lord, you lived your life and you lived a life pleasing to the, to the Father and you lived a life that was sinless. Lord, and you knew all along you were marching towards that cross, and you knew that hour hadn't yet come, but it was going to come, and it did come, and yet you did the right thing for us. Lord, you did it for us. You lived for us. Lord, help us tonight sincerely, Lord, to consider that. The time that we have, Lord, let us not waste it. Let us not squander it. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to your people tonight, Lord, as you speak to them. Lord, that we would do business with you. Let's all stand every head.